get ready for some great garden inspiration. Today's video features Jean, who is a Central Texas gardener here in Zone 8B. She has lovingly tended this very productive garden for the last 14 years. She keeps mosquitoes at bay by hosting colonies of purple martins. Her rainwater harvesting skills keep her garden watered for much of the year. Jean is also a talented fabric artist with several looms in her home. She has a blog and a YouTube channel that I'll be sure to link in the description box. So let's get started. All right, guys, I am so excited to share this garden with you. I'm here with my friend, my new garden friend, Jean. <laughs> and Jean has been an avid gardener for... Uh, probably about as long as we've been here. I mean, I've dabbled in it over the years, like in Germany, which mm -hmm. is very different than Texas. But I really got crazy about it when we moved here about 14 years ago. About 14 years now. And so not only is she a gardener, but she's also a veteran. She's a wife, a mom. And um, she's also gone through both the master naturalist and master gardener training and yeah. so she's a wealth of knowledge so i'm just so excited that she wants to be my friend because i'm like <laughs> teach me all the things but i've already learned something from you so <laughs> yes yes and so it's great that way gardeners helping gardeners yes. so what do you think your biggest challenge has been since you've been in your garden for 14 years triple digits yeah <laughs> this summer 100 percent triple digits for months on end yeah yeah um, but one of the things that I have noticed about you is you're very resourceful. So you guys are going to see this, but Jean has got a uh, rain harvesting system and a half, let me tell you. <laughs> she's, she's the goal here. And not only does she have a rain harvesting system, but she has created a, a way to pump that rainwater to a larger reservoir because you know we get those 50 60 gallon barrels they don't hold much you can daisy chain them yeah but then i'm mm. going to tell you one inch rain off a small air you know small roof will give you a lot of more rainwater than you can probably really hold yes. and so she has found a way to extend her storage capacity by having a larger yes um barrel and she pumps that using different pumps into that barrel so She's some next, this is some next level <laughs> rain harvesting. Um, but that's one way that you have saved a precious resource yeah. that we tend to get a lot in the spring and in the fall. But yeah. through the drought, you've got rainwater, which is better for our plants, mm -hmm. but also it's just better in terms of rain, uh, just water conservation. Yes. So that's one way that I have seen that you're being very water wise in these triple digit. I'm kind of a crazy woman about it. When we get a good rain, mm -hmm. and if this, if the big 500 gallon one that you'll show later, if that's empty or even close to empty, if I've used some of that up, I'm out here in the pouring rain, like <laughs> like pumping water into it yeah. to hold it so that those can still, that are on the house, can still collect as much water as they can. Yeah. And I'm very happy to say that all of them are full right now. So yeah. what do I have over there? Five? I think 55 gallon drums right now mm -hmm. and then the 500 gallon so I have a lot of rainwater right now just from the rain we've had the last couple of days yeah we've had about four inches is what your yeah, rain gauge my gauge said. said four inches mm -hmm. and so she has collected in her and in her 500 gallon tank is full and then she's got another 200 and honestly I also had already filled up all those five gallon buckets that you saw over by the yes. compost I had done that and I had filled up my wheelbarrow full of water and I moved them over to the beds that I know are still super dry Gotcha. because I dug a little even after that four inches of rain I dug a little it's still dry under there really it's insane Wow. it just doesn't soak up the water when it's that dry gotcha so yeah. I yeah so I poured it all that water like in the areas I knew it needed it in the yard so if even five gallon buckets just open to the rain mm -hmm. you can use that you can just so if it seems intimidating because I get it you know rain harvesting seems like that's a big thing to sort of take on, but it's, it's not. not. You can, it's literally sticking a five gallon bucket out in the open, or you can put yeah. it on the corner of your home um, and see what you can capture that way. And then as you get better at it, you can just grow your, your system, which is what you've done. Mm -hmm. Jean's rain barrels are located somewhat far from her garden space. For this reason, she has installed 125 feet of PVC pipe to channel that water where she needs it. Jean has five 55 gallon rain barrels located on the corner of her home that capture the rainwater from gutter and downspouts. They then drain that into that 125 feet of PVC pipe. The pipe contains valves that either divert that rainwater to her 
500 gallon reservoir or to her garden hose. She's currently using an RV or camper type pump to move all that water across at 125 feet to her garden area. The pump is powered by this solar panel, which is wired to a 12 volt deep cycle battery, which is then wired to a on off switch. You can see here she's got great water pressure and while some of that is certainly helped by the fact that she has full rain barrels, the majority of that pressure is being driven by that pump. If you don't have a pump, you have what is called a gravity fed system and you can expect about 0 to 2 psi from that. The average garden irrigation needs about 10 psi to function. Um, and for reference, municipal water gives you about 40 psi. You can improve your gravity fed system somewhat by placing your barrels higher, but for every one foot you might uh, gain about 0.4 psi. Um, there are just certain things you cannot grow here in the summer. Yeah. And I've just finally accepted that. Instead gotcha. of trying, because you're, gonna, you're not gonna win. Mother nature is gonna win. You're gonna end up with pests and then disease, and you're gonna lose in the long run. So what you need to do is realize that really what we have mostly is two separate seasons. We don't have one long season. Like people up north think we have one long season. We don't, we have two short seasons. Mm -hmm. So um, like we were discussing like the tomatoes, mm -hmm. the cherry tomatoes here do great because they grow quickly. Um, the Juliet tomato is a really good one because it's a small one and it does well with our heat actually. It, um, tomatoes will stop blooming at like 95. Yeah. So, but the Juliet does really well. I don't think it, it didn't do well even like in the 115 we sure. had for two months. But sure. you have to have um, realistic goals. Mm -hmm. we, you cannot win here in July and August. Right. We just can't. You're not going to have a English cottage garden. No. You, now you can make zinnias. It. Zinnias love the heat. <laughs> yeah, you can make that, but use your natives. Yeah, use what works well and what is well adapted to yes. our area is what I. And that's you true. I was mostly talking about vegetables, but yes, that's true. It and that is why we did mostly native because we wanted to save water. We so we got rid of most of the grass in our yard. They're still in the front yard, and there's still an area over there. So we have a lush green, you know, kind of oasis spot. And, but all these planting areas in the spring, this is absolutely amazing. When yeah. everything's in bloom, you know, especially after a good rain and stuff, it's, it's really pretty over here. And we did do the natives for that reason. Gotcha. So that we didn't have to worry about watering. Sure, you know, like in this July and August, I was out here about once a week watering. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, I kind of gave up when the rain barrels were dry and we were already just trying to keep um, the lawns that we do have alive not even green, just alive. Sure. I was like, you know what, the natives will come back. And they and they did. Right. They right. did. We've had a little bit of rain and they've come back. So you, you even prioritize what gets mm -hmm. the resources. Yes. And so one of the big things that I have, because I have a lot of lawn, but what I hear you saying is you have some lawn because she's got dogs and they mm -hmm. need some grass, um, but you reduced your lawn in a pretty sizable way so that you're not spending your precious water right. or our precious water on trying to keep a gigantic lawn, which is probably not doing a lot for you in terms of, I mean, it's nice, but it's not as beautiful as- It's not as pretty as this. Right, mm -hmm. and it's not, certainly not necessarily uh, doing a lot for a food web. And it's a lot of work. Exactly. It's a lot of work you're mowing, mowing that it, much. You're trimming it. Mowing it and mowing and trimming a half an acre of grass is not fun. Right, right. and so for the resources and effort you pour into it. It's not terrible, I'm not anti-grass. No. But um, if you can reduce that and be smarter about what you pour your resources yes. in, that's how we get through these summers. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of soil do you have and how do you amend it? It's, it's, it's clay with a lot of limestone. Okay. Um, for, for my vegetable garden, it's raised beds. So okay. it's all brought in soil and it's got compost added to it every year and um, like raised bed soil and all that because it does, you know, it packs down um, just through the weather and stuff. And then for the rest of the yard, I actually don't amend that much because I want, I mostly plant natives and I want them to be able to just make it. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. And so what I hear you saying is with your soil, how you overcome it really is by using raised beds where necessary. Yes. At, but you also are just using what's native to the area because it's already well adapted. Yes. So that, that makes sense. And I've heard a lot of gardeners that have been at it a while say exactly the same thing. Oh, good. <laughs> so I'm seeing, a, I'm hearing a common thread with that. Give us a couple things you would recommend 
for a new Central Texas gardener. You mean plant-wise? Well, just anything, um, whether it be resources, well, plants. A really good resource. I know that that's we're, a big question. <laughs> we're really blessed to have is um, Texas A&M AgriLife. Um, their website has a wealth of knowledge. This planting guide I still use okay. constantly. I don't know if you can see it, but you can I'll download sure it online. I'll make sure I take a picture of it. And too. I'll get you the link to it, right to it. Perfect. Um, and then you also are an avid note taker. I see you've I got do. a notebook mm -hmm. here. I do. I keep notes of the dates and and um, what I planted. Um, I try to go back and write down like what worked, what didn't work. It doesn't always happen. I always think I'm going to remember, and then I don't. <laughs> Like, I'm yeah. out here working in the yard. Oh, I need to write that down when I get in the house. I forget. Yes. But I know at least when I did it. And I do the same thing in conjunction with these notes. I also, I don't know if you noticed on the, the plant markers, uh -huh. I wrote um, the name of the plant, the date I planted it. And I also just this year started putting where I got the seeds from. I have like a code, like say it came from botanical interest. I put BI and the year on the packet. And then I also see that you have... A, an amazing seed storage kit here. This is not my idea, and this is okay. all over YouTube. I'm quite sure everyone has probably already seen this, or at least most have, and it's just one of these photo um, containers. You can get them Hobby Lobby, Walmart, I think all over the place. All the craft stores have them, but th I just have them labeled with um, seed categories. Like I have um, like the bean, like I have all the cool weather ones on one side and all the warm weather ones on the other side. Um, I have one box for herbs, so. Are the cool weather ones in the cool colors? And well, the I tried to do that. The they colors? pretty much are. <laughs> Not exactly, but that is what I, I was going for. I am loving your level of OCD I right was, now. I, I am. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate it. I do. Not everyone does. <laughs> I do. So that is great. And so one of the things we talked about, because I just got into storing seeds, is where you want to store them so you've got to you've got them yes. organized but where would you store them would i you, keep these recommend? in my in my laundry room okay. it's the most i mean it's the most unused room that i can't like i can't put them in a garage mm -hmm. not here in central it's okay 150 degrees in there in the summer and yeah. very cold in the winter and gotcha I, I it's not good for them so, so it's going to destroy your viability if your seeds I, don't I believe, put yes. them in your garage mm -hmm. or where there's a huge temperature fluctuation yes you got to keep them in a cool dry place and so speaking of which I also see that you've got those I do I have dry packets dry the, packs what are these called silica mm -hmm. gel packets that's yeah. just stuck in there as well yeah just save them from stuff I stick them in there just in case um, sure. well thank you so much for allowing Thanks us for to check out your garden Thanks it's for coming I love to share it it is beautiful it is resilient it is sustainable I mean you are doing so much so well and thank you. I am really looking forward to learning more from you and thank I'm so you. glad you're here. <laughs> I've already learned from you. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and y'all take care.